Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to see you here. You came to be entertained and to forget your troubles. I know there is always some misunderstanding between husband and wife, parents and children and sweethearts. And everyone thinks his or her problem is always the greater. But I think after you hear this story, you might change your mind. And the things that appear grave to you now will diminish and fade away. This story has a real problem. It is the story of Vivian Hamilton, accused of murder and being tried before me, Judge Mitchell, without a jury. Of course, the prosecution has painted Vivian Hamilton as a uh, cold-blooded murderess, a woman without a soul. But we have yet to hear her side of the story. The defense may proceed. Your Honor, we have heard up to this time nothing but the damning evidence the prosecution has brought forth. We have offered no defense, nor do we intend to do so, until you have heard the real story. Vivian Hamilton, will you now tell the court in your own words your story as you lived it? Yes, sir. We were such a happy family. The Gordons, Sardo, Del Rio, the Benedetts, Ross and Kennedy, Whitey Roberts, Tony Lavella. We've always been the headliners, the Hamilton sisters. It was during rehearsal that our manager, Mr. Hinckley, sold an idea to Mr. McKenzie, the theater owner. And... You're away. I keep thinking of you, blessing the love we knew. Every morning when I awake, have my coffee and coffee cake. I pour coffee for two. Just as I did with you Every evening I set your place As it used to be I imagine I see your face Keep dreaming, I hold you tight. That's the way it will be through this eternity till you return to me. Bravo, magnifico, bravissimo. Great, end of it, Kenzie? Well, a good routine. A good routine? Listen, with that act and a little smart publicity, your theater won't have enough seats to hold the audience, Mac. Andre, when did you get in? Today. I was sent for special. Each time I see you girls, you look more wonderful. It's incredible. Each time I see you, I can't believe it either. After that riot in Memphis, when your mental act backfired, I thought you'd given up your uh, career. Oh, well, that was just a, just a mental lapse. Look, Ken, you're asking me for a percentage deal, but all you're offering is conversation. It wasn't been a trick we haven't tried before. Except one. That's why I sent for police, though. Come on, let's go to your office. Come on, Andre. None of your foreign remarks. Oh, but I was talking about angels from heaven. 
Thank you. Now, Mr. Mackenzie, will you tell the court exactly what happened? Well, I remember. It all started as a publicity stunt for the show. The theater business had fallen to an all-time low. I knew I had an exceptionally good bill, but it still didn't help. I was ready to listen to any proposition. Hinkley sold me the idea. All right. You put an SRO sign on my box office, Hinkley, and you got yourself a deal. Well, how about the girls? Will they go for it? I'm their manager, aren't I? Just leave it to Hinkley. Oh, say, Mac. I happen to be a little low this week, and uh, since I've been engaged, I was wondering... Sorry, Andre. You know our policy. No advances. Besides, I didn't send for you. Well, then who did? I did. Oh, you. And how about you lending me a hundred to payday? How bad do you need it? Bad enough to ask you. I'm not going to lend it to you. This time you're going to have to work for it. In fact, an extra hundred. Every week. That's the pitch. Romance! Right down your alley. I just dreamed up a little publicity stunt for the girls. And I'm gonna need somebody to play, uh, Romeo. For a hundred a week. In advance. Bring on, Juliet. That door hasn't got an usher, and you got hands, so not before you come in. There's such a thing as privacy. From burlesque to privacy. Look, honey, that body beautiful of yours has been reflected off too many front row bald heads. So now all of a sudden, it's Mabel. The modest Mabel. During my career, burlesque was an art. My act had dignity. Dignity! Look, kid, one more bump, and you've been right out of the fit. Where are the girls? In there. Hey, girls, the ten percenter is here. Oh, look. This isn't the wide open spaces, and that's no lily of a valley. How do you smoke a good cigar? After the day, Mabel, after the day. <clears throat> What's it all about? Girls, from now on, it's mink and Cadillacs, just like I said. Leave it to Hinkley. When I got through with Mackenzie, he couldn't wait to say yes. But? But? What do you mean, but? Did I ever tell you a story? Did I ever tell you a lie? Did I... Well, look, uh, this isn't very serious. It's just a little publicity stunt. The last publicity stunt he pulled was when he buried that swami. If it hadn't been for the fire department, they'd have never dug them up. Burials, burials, what are you talking burials? This is an engagement, we're gonna get married. Just a little publicity stunt. Nothing serious, eh? I've heard enough. Hinkley, you must be out of your mind. Out of his mind? For 10 percent, he'd bury his own mother-in-law. Now, now look, girls, calm yourselves. Nobody's really getting married, and good publicity never heard of that. Especially for only a hundred a week. Well, maybe he's right after all. This is show business. I knew you'd come up with some crazy idea. But this one might have possibilities. By the way, who's the groom? Andre. With all the men in the world, why did you have to pick on him? Who else would have done it? Count me out. I'm not the romantic type. Well, I guess from here on, my love story begins. Just leave it to Hinkley. <laughs> leave it to Hinkley. Well, if it all blows up, I can always go back to Minsky's. Well, at first I didn't think it would work, but uh, Hickley's idea proved to be a winner. The newspapers lost no time in covering the announcement of the engagement, and he gave a smile to space and pages of publicity. Well, close together, please. Put your arm around there. Your chin up, please. Mm, a little more to the left, Miss Hamilton. Chin up. Ah, uh, that's it. A trifle more, now, just a trifle. What we want is a great big smile. You should be very happy, Miss Dorothy. What's going on? What's all this about? Stand back. They're taking pictures, can't you see? Oh, I'm uh, sorry to be late. I'm uh, from the examiner. You're just in time. Go ahead. Good. Well, ready now? Kiss your fiance, Mr. Pariso. Hold it. Still. Well, I really want to. I really want to. Good luck, Henry. No matter how much What did I 
tell you. SRO. Just lay with the hanky. Yeah. I was practicing a little juggling I got so I could do three pretty well. You've been so nice, I'm gonna try it. <laughs> Jealousy. Right, I'll fool him. You wait a minute. <laughs> you know, a pause makes some jugglers nervous. <laughs> Doesn't bother me a darn bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Watch this one. This is the heart of it. Oh, 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 isn't that awful? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, for it. It's good to suffer. Oh, it. Throw me another plate here, will you, George? Just one, so that's it. Very good. Uh, there we go. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, how do you stop this thing? <laughs> Don't laugh, it ain't funny. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Oh, did you see that? Do me a favor, orchestra. Play me enough music to get me from here over to there, will you? Okay? Too good for words. You ought to see the show, Mr. Price. Couldn't get a seat. The SRO sign is out. That's why I came backstage. Mackenzie said it was okay. Hurry it up. They were almost on. Why don't you wait and join us after the show? <laughs> I can't tonight, girls. I've got a date. I'll just stay on the wings and watch. Okay? Good luck. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
fall in love. Never say you don't like dreaming of a cozy cottage, a garden too, and tiny feet to run to welcome you. Never say you'll never be the kind to ever keep one sweetheart on your mind. The kind that say they don't fall, fall the hardest of all. So never say you'll never fall in love. Never say you'll fall in love. Of a cozy cottage, a garden key, and tiny feet to run to welcome you. Never say you'll be the kind to ever keep one sweetheart on your mind. The kind that say they don't fall, fall the hardest of all. So never, never, no, never, never. Never, never, no, never, never, never say you'll never fall in love. gentlemen, a little bit later on in the act, I'd like you to see some very unusual vital tricks. Right now, a little pistol work, if you please. true that you and your sister Vivian quarreled violently over Andre Pariso? Yes. Would you say those quarrels arose out of your sister's antagonism toward the deceased Andre Pariso? We had shared our lives without quarreling. There were many rules we were forced to follow. But we had learned that most of our problems could be settled amiably. Sleeping, eating, living together. There were no adjustments in our relationship we couldn't make. But after our calls about Andre, all our rules meant nothing. Now, I'll bring you your breath grip. No, I don't think I want that one. Get my green wrap, Mabel. What is this, a quick change act? Why don't you make up your mind? I've brought you everything in the trunk. You know, I think I'll go shopping tomorrow. I haven't a thing to wear. Now, look, Daddy, if this is the first time you've worn that dress, you forget I'm engaged. I can't be seen in just anything, Viv. Wait a minute. You're not taking that publicity seriously. I hope you're not falling for that sharp shooter. Well, what if I do like him? He's shown me what living really means. Daddy, you are in love with him. Yes, and he's in love with me. You? You don't know what you're saying. You can't buy happiness. Maybe you can't, if you're trading for even money. But I can afford to be shortchanged. Don't forget. I'm 35. Come on, Bill, we have a date. You have a date. If I have a date, you have a date too, my dear. Yes, with Haley. I love the with your heart. 
was a great house we played to tonight. Hankley's no fool. His idea really worked. We sure have been packing them in. Who is we? Why, Dorothy and me. Oh, and you too, of course. Where do you come in? Why, I. I am the groom. In that case, any man would do. You forget, my dear. Not everyone has my charm. That's what brings them in. Who do you think you are? Oh, I beg your pardon. Girls, it's unbelievable. Look, I just balanced the receipts. Dorothy, Vivian, can you imagine the money we'd have made if we were going to pack the crowds and we turned away? It's terrific. It's colossal. And I'm going to raise your salary 50 percent, Henry. Not bad at all. Why separate payrolls? Did you really think we were one? We have separate bank rolls, separate accounts. We've always led separate lives, and I spend my money as I please. Look at this. Mind you, that's Monday. But wait, Tuesday, we almost double the receipts. It's terrific. And what? See, we broke our records. If we'd only had the Hippodrome. Oh, you. For publicity, your timing is off. I don't see any photographers around. Vivian, Andre just proposed. For the same price, or do we get a discount? Since he may be in the family. Oh, no. It'll cost you more. What? Well, haven't you heard Hinkley say you raised my salary 50%? But, Dottie, you're not. You can't be serious. Oh, yes, I am. We are getting married. <laughs> Hooray! Congratulations! That's the best thing that could have happened. Waiter! Waiter! Champagne! Oh, did you hear that? They get married! Renee! What a place! They get married! What is your name? Your true name? Irene Anders. In the theater you were known as Renee? Yes. You were Andre Pariso's assistant. Yes. Isn't it true that you were more than that? Yes. I was in love with Andre. We had planned to be married, and we would have been if it hadn't been for Dorothy Hamilton. He was in love with me. Nice technique, Andre. My dear, the true artist must give us all at every performance. You know, this profile of me isn't bad at all. Well, while you're making headlines, I'm getting the brush off. The only time I've seen you since this thing started is on the stage. Well, my dear, you should consider yourself very fortunate. Think of all the people who come to the theater just to see me and are turned away at the box office. Oh, tell it to Mackenzie. He might appreciate the big attraction. But it's the Hamilton sisters that are getting the percentage. 
percentages had a way of seeking their own level. That, my dear, is a basic law of supply and demand. But I have already started collecting our share. What did you do? Hypnotize her? Charm is the word, Renee. Charm. And as you see from this photo, the subject is quite susceptible. Well, what am I supposed to do while you're teaching her economics? Join the Hearts Club? You're not eligible. Yet. Now run along, my dear. Why don't you turn us your light, Dottie? I can't. Not yet. Good night.
What is it, darling? What is wrong? I've been dreaming. I can't. I can't go on. Don't you think I know how you feel? I wanted love, too. All our lives, we've had to bury every normal emotion. I'm not a machine. I'm a woman. I should have the right to live like one. We've always said we were like other people. Yet different. From the moment we started to crawl, when the leg of the table got between us and we couldn't pass, Yes. I remember. But we decided that our physical bond but we decided that our physical bond would never be our cause. But we've been successful. We've reached the top in show business. And there isn't a thing we can't have. Except happiness. We've fooled ourselves that by entertaining others, we were making ourselves happy. But I never stood in your way. No. But always together. On dates. Parties, nightclubs. I want to be free. Now I know that the only way I can be happy is to be alone with a man I love. Free? But we've always been together. And we'll be that way forever. Not forever. There must be a way. There must be someone who can help. Then, remember? Dr. Thompson. Separation. But Dorothy, no. We've been prodded and examined like guinea pigs since the day we were born. This is my life, too, and I have a right to live it. Yes, you have that right. But what good is it? Nothing you do has any meaning without love. How much can love demand from us? Remember the two brothers? When one of them died and the other had to be separated, he only lived a few days. We wouldn't have a chance. I don't care. I'd rather be dead than go on like this. You really love him so much. All right. Let's see, Dr. Thompson. Never have a set of Siamese twins been operated on while both were alive. If this operation were to be attempted, it would have to be done in three stages. The first two, quite simple. Separation of the muscles, cartilage, and bone. Severance of the blood vessels would be no problem. The girls have different circulatory systems. Even their blood uh, types are different. But the third will be difficult. And extremely dangerous. Successful separation of the nerves of the spinal column would be a great aid to science but it might result in death. In this case, I would say the prognosis is unfavorable. Dr. Eckhart, what is your opinion? These two girls cannot live apart. Although they have two distinctly independent minds, they have been conditioned since birth to live as an entity. In my opinion, their separation is not feasible. When I examined the girls a number of years ago, the mere mention of doctor was enough to disturb them. Only a great emotional stress has brought them here. Dorothy's desire for marriage. This will not be easy. Miss Manning, will you have the girls step in? Yes, sir. The doctor will see you now. Will you come in, please? Dr. Eckhart, Dr. Hurd and myself have discussed your case at great lengths. And uh, we want to tell you that we admire your extreme courage. But I'm afraid there's very little hope. Then there's nothing you can do. As a woman, I understand thoroughly. There is nothing to keep you from getting married. There's no reason why you can't have children, as you are. My advice to you is get married. I guess there's nothing left. It's your happiness. Go ahead. Get married. This is unheard of. If somebody had told me, I wouldn't have believed it. Neither would I, but it's a fact. What's the matter with those monkeys? I don't know.
We got it? We got it all right. In the neck. I sent for you because you asked me to get Dorothy a marriage license. Here's the result. Twenty-seven different states have denied you the right to marry. But why? I don't understand. I'm baffled myself. They gave no reason. They say it's bigamy. How dare they? I'll sue for damages. For what? By the implication. Me, a bigamist. Look, Dorothy, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to send you to a friend of mine. Maybe he can see a way out. His name is Dr. Burnham. Doctor? No, he's not that kind of a doctor. Here's his address. Girls. Oh, who is it, Martha? What those two young ladies to see you? This is Dr. Burnham. We will refer to you, Doctor. Oh, yes. Well, I hope you won't mind if we chat while I plant this bush. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bench right over there. And, uh, Martha, why don't you fix us some tea? Of oh, course. Thank you, Doctor. And that old bench is a little shaky. I must fix it sometime. But the garden seems to take about all of my time. Martha objects, too. She says I spend more of my time on my flowers than I do on my sermons. And perhaps she is right. Though I must say, my congregation doesn't seem to suffer for it. They're twins. Yes. Nature sometimes permits twins to blossom from the same bud. Permit? You make it sound as if nature were granting a favor. Oh, no, my dear. Nature never grants favors. What she does is with purpose and meaning. Every living creature is a part of her pattern. What purpose can she have in creating this, when every other thing is an entity by itself? It is not easy to understand God's mysterious ways with patience. But I'm afraid mine is just about gone now. This string simply won't come untied. Oh, thank you. Children, I think I understand your bitterness. But you must relieve yourself of belief in limitations. But the barriers raised before us are very real. Faith can overcome even these. You have been forced to live together constantly, bound by spiritual and physical ties. Yet I am sure you have found a way to live separate and private lives. And mentally we have, but it's almost impossible to convince people of that. That's why we came to you. I want to get married, but the officials have refused me a license. They say it would be bigamy. Why, that's bigotry. There can be no problem of moral or social wrong unless there is an intent of immorality. You shall marry the man of your choice. And I feel quite sure that in God's eyes, your marriage will be held. Reverend Doctor, the tea is ready. Oh, yes, uh, we're coming. Uh, would you lead the way to the house? You see, I don't have my eyes with me. Uh, my dog is in the hospital. And uh, now don't worry. I know about your problem. I'll see that you get a license. You are familiar with the weapons Andre Pariso used in a shooting act? Of course. Do you recognize this revolver? Yes. It's the one that Andre used Where to... else did you see this gun? And in whose hands? In Andre's, in this dressing room. The night that he showed me the marriage license that he got with the help of Dr. Burnham. You see, I got it. Here it is. You're not going through with this. Why, well, who's going to stop me? Me. Suppose I told him the truth. About what? 
about us. It might spoil your marriage. You wouldn't dare. Don't forget I use real bullets. Accidents can happen. I can miss. Oh, don't be foolish. Haven't you seen our new building? Andre and Renee in the second spot. And it's only the beginning. Soon we'll be the headliners. Now be a good girl and get dressed. And don't forget, be at our wedding after the show. the show will get married. Everything is set. I'm so happy. Oh, even the mayor promised to be at our wedding. I raised the prices and the show finally get in. It's fabulous. Look at this. Look at the headlines. I just wish this theater was mad as a square garden. What theater? I thought Dr. Burnham was going to marry us at the church. It's ridiculous. This is a chance of a lifetime. Do you realize the publicity we're getting? Every official in the city will be here. How is it we knew nothing about it? There was no time for explanations. And after all, wasn't Dorothy eager to get married? Yes, but at least we should have been consulted. Well, what difference does it make when we get married? We're show people. Hello, sisters. On stage. All right, let's leave them alone. On stage. All right, let's leave them alone. Now let me have one look at you. This is a big show tonight, girls. Yes, I think you look fine. Wonderful, Andre. Diamonds, too? Good going. unusual nights in the history of the Bijou Theater. Over 2,500 guests will witness the marriage of Dorothy Hamilton to Andre Friso. They chose this stage because the show people. The number of civic and social leaders present are too numerous to mention. But whether you're a social leader, a civic leader, or just plain Jane and Joe, we're happy to have you with us tonight. We are 
are gathered in this company to witness the joining together of this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Into that state, these two persons have now come to be so joined. Unless anyone can show cause why you may not be so joined together, I will now proceed. By the authority vested in me as a justice of the peace, do you, Andre Pariso, take this woman to your wedded wife to live together in lawful matrimony? Do you, Dorothy Hamilton, take this man to your lawful wedded husband to live together in lawful matrimony? Will you love him, comfort him, honor, and keep him? I really I wonder if she'll be by giving and receiving a ring. She sure and by joining it. hands. I do now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Congratulations, sir. Much happiness, my dear. Thank you. Good night, girls. Good night, Mabel. Coming in. bad about that price. Rotten, I call it. But I'll get busy and have that marriage announced. Yeah, she can do that all right. But it's pretty hard to mend a broken heart. Yep. That's a dirty trick the way Andre played Dottie. I can't figure why he did it. She's such a swell girl. I'll tell you why. Because he never loved her. Vivian Hamilton, will you now tell the court what happened after Andre Pariso deserted your sister? The show had to go on. We did our act as though nothing had happened. Until. Let us say you fall in love. You like dreaming of a cozy cottage on Garden Street and Garden Street. But I know 
You snap out of it, Dottie. You didn't do a thing with our act tonight. I know it, but I can't help it. Look, sister, you don't think you're the only woman that's been jilted by Andre? No, of course not. It wouldn't be so bad, but I still love him. And that's what really hurts. Don't let him know it, Dottie. Smile. Put on a good act and smile. I'll try this. Let's change and get out of here. No. Why? Not yet. I want to watch Andre's act. Oh, all right. you're going to see performed on this stage tonight is the only one of its kind in the entire world. I'm going to use these rifles to play that organ.
please. Quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a slight accident. Music. And that is the truth, the whole truth. The defense rests. Your witness. No questions. The defendant is excused. Thank you. The judge is going to have a tough time making a decision in this case. Your Honor, there probably has never been a more unusual case presented in any court. Nor has any court heard so much testimony irrelevant and immaterial. In a deliberate attempt to arouse our sympathy, the defense has taken us backstage into the life of the Hamilton sisters, deliberately ignoring the fact that we are only here because murder has been committed. The state is not concerned with the involvement in the lives and loves of the defendant, her sister and the murdered man. It is only concerned with one question. Did or did not Vivian Hamilton, with premeditation and in cold blood, kill the deceased Andre Pariso? The answer to that is yes, by her own admission. I therefore ask the court to bring in the only verdict possible. Guilty. Guilty of murder in the first degree. I thank you. Your Honor, the state has built a case against Vivian Hamilton, which is punishable by law and applicable to all human beings. The prosecution demands the extreme penalty. When it comes to punishment, the law demands equality. But the fact is, the law has never considered them as equals. They have been denied marriage, children, love, and all normal human fulfillment. Do you know how the Book of Knowledge defines them? As monstrosities. Your Honor, I ask you, are they monstrosities or are they human beings? Has the law ever protected them? No. But when it comes to punishment, to the destruction of their lives, the law demands the extreme penalty. Yes. Vivian Hamilton is guilty. Guilty of loving her sister better even than her own life. Should you find the defendant guilty as charged under the statutes of this state, the death penalty would be mandatory. But if the law is to be satisfied, then the state becomes the murderer of an innocent person, Dorothy Hamilton. If you find Vivian Hamilton guilty of manslaughter, the penalty is life imprisonment. And even then, the law cannot deprive her sister Dorothy of her rightful liberty. I believe it is a fact that the law cannot take Vivian Hamilton into custody. I cannot conceive in my mind any other verdict than not guilty. The defense rests its case in the hands of the court. State may proceed. State rests. Court will remain in session until a decision has been reached.
tell the judge. Court will come to order. The defendant will rise. After three years on the bench, I can find no precedent that will help serve me as a guide in this case. Justice has two purposes, to protect the innocent and to punish the guilty. Were I Solomon, I might be given the supreme wisdom to do justice. But as it is, I cannot pass sentence on an innocent person and deprive her of her liberty and her life. Therefore, a higher court than mine must impose final judgment. You have just listened to the tragic story of the Hamilton sisters. Do you still think that your problems are as great as theirs? And yet they learn to live in harmony. We all have problems. And I must confess that I too have a problem. Perhaps you can help me. The defense has chosen to place the entire responsibility of this case on my conscience. Had the defense chosen trial by jury, any one of you might have been selected to share this burden. And I wonder, if you were the jury, what would your verdict be? Please help me. Let me know. Help me solve my greatest problem.